from the shutdown to the debt ceiling debate. We want to answer two questions. What is the economic impact of a government shutdown? And how will the shutdown impact the debt ceiling debate that will come later in the year? First, the shutdown impact. The actual impact of past government shutdowns has been somewhere between insignificant and very small. The impact is hard to identify in GDP data, given that there's so much more powerful factors that are typically in play like the trade war, Fed rate policy, oil prices, etc. Also, this shutdown is only a partial one, so an even smaller impact would be expected than in the past. And finally, once the shutdown is over, the federal workers are typically given back pay. In short, estimates of the GDP impact are usually overstated during the crisis, just as they were every time in the past. The main impact of the shutdown is on assessments of future risks. For example, participants in markets, say such as gold and foreign exchange, they may raise their risk assessments for the U.S. That is, the symbolism of a dysfunctional U.S. federal government is the focus of markets, not the actual economic impact. An extended shutdown would give a lift to gold and maybe contribute to the U.S. dollar weakness, especially if it were coupled with the separate issue of whether the Fed takes a pause on raising rates. As for equities, they hardly care about the shutdown one way or the other, since the impact on GDP is negligible. Now, what about the debt ceiling debate? This is going to come much later in the year. The U.S. federal government debt ceiling has been suspended by law until March 1, 2019. Then it will go back into effect at the current level of the national debt, whatever it is on March 1st. The U.S. Treasury then may or may not decide to overfund and issue more debt than is actually needed in January and February. They would do this if they wanted to like delay the need to raise the debt ceiling. And they have other extraordinary measures they can use. So the debt ceiling debate will probably happen in the summer or maybe even the fall of 2019. We do note that overfunding and issuing more debt in January and February, if it were to happen, and we don't know, uh, that could impact the shape of the yield curve temporarily. Now, when the debt ceiling does need to be raised, it's going to be a three-way battle among the Senate, the House of Representatives, and the White House. And it's going to usher in an extremely divisive time in Washington, D.C. Could make the shutdown look like an in insignificant little party. Now, here's the deal. The Democrats control the House of Representatives, and they have signaled that they plan to add a clause to every new spending bill that the debt ceiling will go up by the amount of new spending. And they also plan to add some additional authorities to suspend the debt ceiling under certain conditions. That is, the House Democrats want to have a tight link between appropriating money and raising the money to pay the bill. If you're going to order dinner, you're going to have to pay the bill as the food comes. Okay, now, this removes the threat of a shutdown or a debt default, but only if the Senate and the White House agree. This new approach being put forward is actually a throwback, a modified throwback, to what was known as the Gephardt Rule. This was put in place when former House Democratic Majority Leader Dick Gephardt was in charge back in 1979. And it stood the test of time until 1975, when Republican Congressman Newt Gingrich started using the debt ceiling to shut down the government as a tool of leverage. Now, finally, what is the potential market impact? Debt ceiling debates have much more market impact than government shutdowns due to the direct impact on short-term U.S. Treasury securities that might mature during a debt ceiling crisis, as well as placing the full faith and credit of the U.S. government in question. Interestingly, though, a debt ceiling crisis can lead to trouble for equities and thus to rallies in U.S. Treasury securities due to the fight to quality effect. That is, even as the debt ceiling crisis threatens the ability of the U.S. Treasury to pay its bills, Treasury yields might even decline a little bit. I'm Blue Putnam, Chief Economist, CME Group.